Episode 9 of A Teacher, Claire and Eric separately hit their breaking points. Hey, how's it going everybody and welcome back to Movie Files. Elliot back again with my weekly recap, breakdown, and review of the latest episode of FX on Hulu. We're talking to Teacher Episode 9, where we're getting more of kind of the carryover of what life is like for Claire after what happened with her and Eric. And we're still getting that lingering kind of storyline of we know Eric needs help and he even says that much so at the end of this episode. We're going to break it all down in this spoiler discussion, but before we dive into the details, as you can see on the screen now, make sure you all are following me on all my other social media accounts like Facebook. Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, which you can find all those links in the description below. If you are new to the channel, welcome to the community. Consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell. That way you all can get the alert from when I drop new videos. It would mean a lot to me if you all can like and share this video. It helps out the channel, but I also really appreciate the support. And in the comments, let me know you all's thoughts on episode nine, your pros, your cons. We'll talk about my feelings here in a bit, but do you kind of feel like there, this episode was kind of a filler, kind of lingering over some of the storylines that could have maybe played better in previous episodes? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, like I say every week, I don't watch the trailer. Let me know what you expect to see in episode 10 in the finale of this series. So just initial thoughts. Kind of like last week when I felt a little underwhelmed. Now this one, we get more of an understanding of Claire, how she's kind of masking her pain, very similar to what Eric did a couple weeks ago with him drinking and partying and having sex and all that stuff. We see that from Claire and we see this kind of destructive nature of what she does when she's kind of in a dark spot. And we still get that continuation from when we got two weeks ago from Eric in regards to he needs help. We see the lingering nature of that storyline. So to me, this episode was just kind of, like I said, to, I hate to use the term because it does push the narrative forward, but it did feel like a filler episode, and it felt like this episode could have been just tacked on to the episode two weeks ago, and even last week's episode, and honestly, I think 10 episodes might have been a little bit too long for the show, but we'll leave that towards the finale if maybe the finale be wraps up everything perfectly but for me right now it seems like these these last two weeks have just been kind of more of like just lingering uh storylines and not really kind of leading up to much but again let me know your pros and cons of this episode but for me uh, kind of unnecessary last two episodes, I'm not going to lie, but we'll get into that at the end of uh, this review, but starting off with this recap, as we open the episode, we see Claire is on a date, she's on a Tinder date, and also just kind of timeline-wise, you know, normally with this show, we get weeks, months uh, in advance, but I'm pretty sure that this was probably maybe just a couple weeks removed from Claire being out of county jail, but we see that she's on this Tinder date, you know, they're having a conversation, the gentleman asks, which I don't even know if we learn his name, we'll just call him Tinder guy, he asks her, when was the last time you've been on the date, when was the last time you've been kissed, and she just simply replies, it's been a long time, right, so we see the scene transitions to them going to his house and they obviously you know begin the kissing and everything and things lead to the bedroom before it goes to the bedroom she mentions to him that hey I got into some trouble here and I have this you know house arrest monitored on which he could care less if she had a chain and ball on he was just there for you know doing one thing obviously so we see it leads over to the bedroom and very similar to the scene that we got with Eric hooking up with that college girl two episodes ago where you know, they're having sex and he brings up, he starts to talk dirty to her about, you know, he Googled her name, very similar to the girl a couple weeks ago. Well, she didn't Google him. She just knew him from when they were in high school on the news surrounding Eric. But he says that he Googled her and it appears while he's saying these things to Claire, talking dirty to her, he, it seems like she was covering her face, kind of being like she was going to cry. She was upset, but very similar to Eric, she kind of leans into it and she says, you know, say it again. And, and we kind of we've kind of gotten that from Claire in this season so far when it comes to, you know, I think of the scenes very early on the season with her and Matt having sex and the way it was kind of handled and the way she told Eric to look at her. It's like she kind of uses sex as a way of escaping her reality, also kind of use it as a way to cover her pain. And, you know, there's definitely some stuff going on with Claire mentally. And we'll, we'll speak about that a little bit later. But cut to Eric. We, we catch up to him. We see he's in his dorm room. His, his roommate asks him, you know, did you go to class today? It appears that he's skipping class, and we learn that much so later in the episode, but his friend tells him to put some clothes on. They go out to dinner, which we'll talk about that here in a bit, but go back to Claire. We see she's now working at her dad's shop or wherever he works uh, at a painting store or something like that, but we see that there's been some type of bond ship of sorts. We can tell that the father is that it, we, we never met Wyatt other than, you know, last week, but you can tell that he's 
he's a different man just from the way Claire has spoken about him in the past. And he's trying to turn a new leaf and almost trying to make up for not being a father for her when they were younger. As we see them kind of talking and, and Wyatt mentions, oh, you know, you should probably check into that. Maybe I think I'm, I'm assuming it's a therapy place that she used to go back to kind of where she used to go to kind of deal with the issues of her father. And she says, no, I don't want to go there, dad. And it seems like he's trying to, again, be a father, trying to make up for lost time. And he kind of leaves and gives them the schedule. And one of the employees, it seems like the dad likes to hire people that he wants to help out. <laughs> As we see, one of the employees seems to have some type of uh, sobriety or some type of addiction. And he mentions that he's been sober for a year and that she's lucky to have Wyatt as a father. And if it wasn't for Wyatt, that he wouldn't have been in the position that she is or that he's currently in. So it's kind of pushing the narrative of like Claire, like maybe opening up more and letting the father, her father kind of step up and be there for her as we'll talk about, you know, with her troubles. But going back to Eric and his roommate having dinner at this. Uh, bar. We get a little bit more information confirming that yes, Eric has been skipping class. He might even potentially lose his scholarship. Uh, and, and we kind of understand that. We saw that again. That's why I mentioned earlier that this kind of feels like a, just a carryover for two episodes ago. I wish that they just would have made the stuff that happened with Eric happen in that episode because it was an Eric, you know, centric episode. But we see that he's losing his scholarship. He's not going to class. He, the, the roommate even mentioned that he has a different vibe from the first half of the semester to where we are now. Obviously, since we saw him at the beginning of the semester, he was trying to change a new leaf, trying to forget the past. We saw him partying, drinking, you know, doing all crazy stuff. But then as soon as he heard that Claire was getting out of jail, that's where things switch. And then seeing Claire and then her, as we know last week, saying, just go, Eric, be a kid. That really is, it's rallying his world because he told her everything that he feels for, right? That he can't eat, he can't sleep, he can't study, he, he wants, he earns to be, he just, just yarns to be with her. He just wants to be with Claire with so much and it's just disrupting his life moving forward. So we kind of, I understand where they're where the show was kind of leaning at towards Eric, but I just wish that this stuff that we got in this episode was just tacked on to the episode that we got from him two weeks ago. It just feels like it's just a lingering thing going on. But again, I, I know what they're getting at. I just wish it was executed a little bit differently and, and maybe explore new nuances with the character. But Cut back to Claire. We see that, you know, we get the return of Matt. We haven't seen him in a couple weeks as we see that he finally has the divorce papers ready to go. And they have some small talk, him and Claire. And, and you know, she, he mentions that he's doing the best that he can. He's the happiest he can be in the circumstance. You know, he's been dating. He has a recording album going. So things seem to be going better for him. And then he mentions to Claire, like, she's like, oh, I'm glad to hear that. He's like, Claire, don't pretend like you care about me. And she says, you know, oh, I do. He's like, if you cared about me, you wouldn't have done what you had did to me. And she even mentions, well, I'm sorry for my mistake and that pissed him off that word that kind of triggered him because he says oh that's what you're calling it, a mistake and he gets upset and kind of tears up a little bit and politely asks her to leave but again it just goes back to what Nate said last week where this affects not only Claire and obviously Eric but everyone surrounding them their loved ones like Matt so now him moving on to a new relationship this recording the album it probably still hits him mentally like what did I do wrong what was it that me as your husband that you wanted to sleep with your students so I don't know if we'll get mad in the finale but I'm pretty sure we got the conclusion of that character but it is it was kind of sad to see Matt just being like he says something to her in regards to I don't know how I ever loved you and, and and stuff like that when you when you marry someone they were college sweethearts and to to them to have their relationship in on that note definitely has to be kind of heartening or heartbreaking for that character but back to Eric at the bar he runs into this bridal shower they grab some drinks they get to talk and they introduce Eric to Chloe, who uh, appears to be single. Again, that stuff, that storyline, there's a parallel with that Chloe character, not only connecting to what we learned from her and her past relationship, but also potentially connecting to Claire, which we'll talk about here in a bit. But going back to Claire, she comes from work, you know, or, or I assume she left just work. She goes to her Tinder date's house and she doesn't want to talk. She's not there to just have dinner and Netflix and chill. She just wants to go straight to the chill part uh, and, and hooking up with this Tinder guy. And again, we see in this scene that she's just masking her pain. She needs help just as much as Eric does, right? Or if not more, especially with her issues with her father, but we see, you know, she goes right into sex and she's like masking it with sex and back to the dirty talk. And it goes from dirty talk to hit me, no, hit me harder. And we see the guy, again, Tinder guy, slaps her, kind of uncomfortable about it. But he's, you know, he's kind of into it. She says, you know, hit me harder. And we see him smack her again and ultimately smacks her so hard that she begins to bleed, which completely turns him completely off. 
Claire sees that and she just leaves. So again, it just goes to show you that Claire is in a really dark spot uh, in regards to masking her pain, not addressing the pain and using sex and dirty talk to kind of pretend nothing's going on. So there's a lot going on with the Claire character. We, we, we cut back to Eric and we see him with, with this Chloe girl as we see that Chloe's friends in the bridal shower has left her because going back to Claire and the similarities for this Chloe character, maybe representing both Claire and Eric, we see that, you know, she mentions that she's single. They're out on the dance floor. She starts to break down and cry. And we learn from this conversation between her and Eric that she was in a five-year relationship. She doesn't want to hook up with Eric. She even addresses like, you're way too young, which, you know, Claire, you know, you could maybe learn a thing or two from Chloe. But nonetheless, we see, again, this connective tissue in a way of this Chloe character is like, you know, Chloe mentions that she was in a bad relationship. You know, this can kind of make maybe go to Eric in this wannabe relationship with Claire and how foundationally speaking, their relationship was built off of lies. And if you ask me, this is my personal opinion. When you have a relationship built off of lies, things aren't going to necessarily work out. So hearing Chloe say essentially what he was in, he wasn't in a relationship for five years, but he was in a toxic relationship. And you know, she even mentions that it was just not a good thing for her to be in that relationship. And that kind of speaks to not only Claire, I'm sorry, not only Eric, but also speaks to Claire. This is, isn't a good relationship, guys. Again, I know some people say in the comments and they might be serious, they may be joking, but some people want to see Claire and Eric together. And I'm just thinking that it, that's that's not a good thing for neither one of those characters, even if they were both, they're both adults, but even if they were five years, 10 years removed from the incident that happened, it's just that the way that that relationship began is not something I think is healthy for either one of those characters. Even if they grow and learn from it, whatever the case may be, just the fact that it was built off of that lie and built off of that very inappropriate relationship, I don't see how their relationship can ever be amends. Just me personally. Again, let me know what you all think in the comments below. But wrapping up the episode, Claire heads back home. She confronts her dad about how he's putting on this good person act and how she was younger. She had to look in the trash to see how much he drank that night and just she wished that his sobriety was due to him wanting to be a better father to her, but it was more so him just being a better person, which again, when you do that stuff, yeah, you you obviously feel bad for the people you affected, but you have to get clean for yourself for you could be better for other people. But nonetheless, we see in this scene that she kind of breaks down and says that she wanted to be a teacher and help people due to the fact that she wasn't able to have the relationship with her father and have people there for her. So that was a really kind of sad moment for Claire. Again, I wish this moment was in last week's episode versus kind of the nonsense stuff that we got last week besides the great scene between her and her brother. But nonetheless, we see that again, Claire, she needs help. Uh, I don't know if her father's going to step up and maybe like not push her, but kind of be that person to kind of nudge her to go to the therapy sessions. I don't know what to expect really with that relationship, but it was just interesting again to see how she's, she even says so much so in this one scene where she says she just wants to be gone she's at a low point. She's at rock bottom. Her friends are no longer there. She's getting a divorce. She's lost her job. And again, her job was a place for her wanting to be there for others because she didn't have someone there from her. So it is very sad to see these moments happening with Claire. But I, like I said, I just wish this scene was in last week's episode. But wrapping up the episode, though, we see Eric heads back home to his mom as we see literally parallel back-to-back -back scenes. Claire having a conversation about really kind of calling out for help for her dad and, and everything going on with her, not wanting to be alive, essentially, is what she said in that previous scene. So she gets that, you know, scene with her dad. And Eric has a really nice moment with his mom. He says, you know what, I'm gonna, I, I want to stop by for just a weekend or maybe longer. And then we see him in the episode saying that I need help. You know, I need help, mom. So this again, uh, moments, nice moments towards the back half of this episode. But some of the stuff at the beginning with the Tinder date guy and how that kind of played out and, and the Chloe character, it just feels like lingering storylines that I wish just could have been this this season could have been eight episodes seriously because all the stuff that we got in this week's episode and last week's episode they could have just combined that stuff that we got all the stuff with Claire and Nate all the stuff with you know Claire and her dad and Eric and her mom just could have been one episode and then we get a finale maybe jumping ahead in time, seeing where the characters are. But I just felt like this week and last week and even the week before could have just been one hour episode, if you ask me. But that's how the show's kind of shot. It's essentially 10 episodes cut up in 23, you know, 28 minutes. And it's just a four hour movie just expanding upon it in a TV format. So 
okay episode. I just hope that they stick the landing because I think the last three weeks, uh, or I should say last two weeks, have been just kind of hit or miss for me in regards to the execution and the kind of filler moments within these episodes. But let me know what you all thought of the episode. What do you think will happen with Claire? Will she go into therapy? Uh, will she, you know, take on her dad advice, let him in more and allow him to be there to be the dad that he wasn't there for her when she was younger? What do we expect from Eric? checking in at the therapy, uh, counseling sessions with his mom, and just really kind of letting it all out of what this relationship did to him and how he's really not the same from that relationship and, and everything that went down with him and Claire. And then again, I don't watch next week's preview, so will we get a time jump? Will we see Claire and Eric reunite and have a conversation about what that relationship did to both of their lives, both um, you know Claire and Eric? And just let me know what you all hope to see in this finale. I do plan on actually watching the movie um, and probably giving you guys my thoughts on the film, which I believe is on Hulu. So keep an eye out for that review. But as always, thank you for watching this review. Make sure to like, share, Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Subscribe and hit the notification bell. That way you don't miss any of my other content. And I hope you guys are staying safe. Hope you have a great holidays. And we'll see you in the next video.